Welcome to that Vid Blaster guy. I'm Tom Sinclair, your host today. And well, I guess I'm your host every time. <laughs> you know how you get a camera in front of you and all of a sudden you just start saying dumb stuff. It just brain turns to mush. What can I say? Really going to be an interesting show today. It's kind of a smorgasbord approach to what's going on with Vid Blaster. We've got, uh, got several good questions uh, folks are talking about in the chat room right now. And uh, then I've got a couple items on my agenda that I want to talk about today. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's a good day. It's a good day. We're having fun. Uh, Vid Blaster is about, you know, I say about, cross my fingers, about to release uh, beta version 3.23, which will be sort of an incremental beta. You know, it, it's not a, not a major upgrade, probably some bug fixes. But one of the things that Mike Verstig, the developer of VidBlaster, indicated in a post on the VidBlaster forum this week, and by the way, if you haven't discovered the forum, there's lots of neat info in there. It's, uh, it's forum.vidblaster.com. And you can get all sorts of stuff in there. You can register um, to be so, so that you can post in the support section. And if you're a, a actually a licensed VidBlaster user, you can get uh, get uh, approved to 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 post in any of the parts of the forum. Um, but one of the things that he posted in the forum, we've had kind of an ongoing discussion in the feature request segment of the lap for probably about a week or two now about um, making some modifications to the recorder module. And this really benefits the folks that are, that are using the broadcast version, so I'm not going to belabor this point. But the broadcast version allows you to have multiple recorder modules. And I had a client that, or I still have him, um, that has been, uh, we, we built a couple of PCs, and in each PC he had two DeckLink quad capture cards. So for a total of eight inputs, and we were using VidBlaster to record each one of those eight inputs. Well, what happened was that the uh, the way the recorder module is currently configured, apparently, and, and again, I'm, I, I will definitely defer to experts on this one, um, when it comes to, to video formats and compression and codecs and things of that nature. But the way the recorder is currently configured, it ended up using more CPU than uh, than the PC could handle um, in order to record all eight cameras at uh, 720p, uh, 30 frames a second. And we, we, we played around with it, but basically about the best we could get was, was five cameras to record all at the same time. And that's, you know, with a hard drive dedicated for each camera. Um, and we and we tried some other tweaks, but that was about about the end of it. So, whoops, sorry about that. There we go. Um, so, one of the feature requests I made a feature request on the forum to uh, modify the recorder, or you know, produce a new recorder, or whatever method is is best that doesn't use as as much CPU use so that you can have multiple recorders that can record and, and make a good recording. Um, and Mike posted today that um, the, uh, the, the recorder will have a, right now if you, uh, let's see, if you right click your recorder, there is a, a selection for something called format. Um, and you have two choices. You have MPEG-2 Master and then MPEG-2 DVD. And Mike has added a third choice now, which is MPEG-1 Master. Um, and that uh, purports to save about 5% on the CPU usage as compared to the MPEG-2 Master or the MPEG-2 DVD. So, or, excuse me, the MPEG-2 Master. Um, so if you're using five or eight recorder modules, saving, saving an additional 5% uh, on each one can be a, a significant savings. So I look forward to having that released and being able to test it and, and see just how it's working and whether, uh, you know, whether it's going to fit the bill. Um, I've got a black magic card here. Somebody shipped it in to me today. Um, it's kind of a, a, a cool configuration on this card. And excuse me for all the crackling in the background. It's coming out of the paper. 
And the way the card is configured, the card the card is green, unfortunately. So let's let's drop the chroma key for just a second. Um, the card is configured with eight mini SDI inputs. Excuse me, eight. Excuse me, nine SDI connections, four of which are inputs, four of which are outputs, and one of which uh, is, I believe, Genlock. Uh, Martin can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And the uh, the configuration of this card is that if if I've got uh, I've got four cameras coming in. I can attach to the output of the same port and it will pass that camera out. So that was one of the big features that we were able to use on this PC build that, that meant they didn't have to use a hub to split the, the cameras in. They could bring the cameras into one PC and then link those with a, a jumper cable to the other PC in order to get eight cameras coming into one and then passing through to the others. But one of the things that that brings up is the whole subject of latency. What happens when you introduce um, more hardware into the system? Do you, uh, do, you know, does it pass through at the speed of light or is there a, is there a price to be paid by adding more pieces into the chain? And uh, our, our good friend and colleague uh, Martin Kay from Zen Computing in Manchester, England has done a study on this and, and actually just released it today. So you guys are going to see it probably before anybody else does. And Martin has basically set up a, uh, a test lab where he can test the latency of different products. And it's, it's really pretty neat. I'm, I'm not going to go into too much more detail because I, I don't want to steal his thunder. In fact, let's queue up Martin right now, and, uh, and we will see if we can get this to, uh, to play. Hold on a second. Here is Martin K. As someone who sells a range of video capture cards and also deals with switching software like VidBlaster, one of the questions I sometimes get asked is about latency, and that's specifically the delay to the video that takes place as it goes in through the capture card, through the software, and is then uh, sent out the other side. So it's, it's quite obvious when you look at something going through the system, and indeed we've got two signals here, one of which is the source and the other one has gone through the system, that there's a slight delay when the shot changes. But it's quite difficult to work out what it is simply by looking at it. So I've set up a test here and I'll just run through how it's set up and how we're actually gonna measure the latency of a complete system using different bits of software and different capture cards. So at the heart of it all is a little box under there which is a solid state media player and it's got an HDMI output going into an ATEM television studio of which this is the multi-view output. And at the same time, the solid state player has a composite output that's going onto the CRT screen at the back. It happens to be in black and white because it doesn't encode in PAL properly. It goes into the ATEM HDMI camera one to the, HDM, uh, to the ATEM program output, comes out HDMI, is then going over to a computer into, at the moment, a black magic card. So it's in a camera module in VidBlaster, played onto the program output, then going to an output module. The output module is feeding one of the outputs of the graphics card. So we then pick up an HDMI output. It's routed through this little seven inch Lilliput monitor, and then back into the ATEM, where it goes into camera two, which is on the preview display. So we've got a complete round robin from the program output of the ATEM through the capture card, through the software, through an HDMI output and back in and it's displayed in the preview. Now, just looking at this, it's quite difficult to work out exactly how many frames of latency there is. So what we need is a better sort of test signal 
and on our solid state player we have some other files uh, now this is going to play a test file with an on-screen reference frame by frame in this case at 25 frames a second because I'm in the UK and how I'm going to observe this because again it's quite difficult while it's moving is to take some stills at uh, a fairly short exposure time uh, so I can capture individual frames and then we'll analyze the results and it will be fairly easy to see the frame difference at various points in the signal chain. So we're starting this test using VidBlaster and a Blackmagic Decklink mini recorder. That's a single channel, single PCI Express lane, HDMI and STI card. And what we can see immediately, uh, if we look at the CRT monitor at the back, and then we look at the program display in the ATEM television studio, there is a one frame difference there. And that's exactly what I was talking about earlier, the fact that hardware digital vision switches introduce some delay. And in this case, there's clearly one frame there to start the test. From there, we're going across into a bid blaster and we can see in the program display that it's three frames different. So there's a three frame delay getting from the ATEM into VidBlaster and onto the VidBlaster program output. And you can see exactly the same thing if we have a look at the little seven inch Lilliput, We've got the same time code there. And by the time it's then gone through the ATEM again, that's added another frame. So it's showing uh, 11 and on the other side it's 15. So the whole round trip has added four frames onto the original uh, input. The next device that we're looking at is a Magewell XI204. Now that's their four lane PCI Express card, which I reviewed in another video. And that's got two HD inputs, they're multi-purpose, they can take anything from uh, components, VGA, DVI, HDMI, including embedded audio. So it's got two HD inputs and it's also got four SD inputs. So it's a six input card altogether. So looking at what's happening there, we get the usual one frame delay into the ATEM. Um, on the VidBlaster screen, there's only a two frame delay although there is actually another frame delay that's occurring on the output. So by the time it's done the whole uh, round trip across the ATEM, there's a three frames different. Moving on from the XI204 PCI Express, I thought it would be useful to have a look at some USB 3 devices. And I was going to show the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle, which I've used for a lot of tests uh, for the past few years, but at the moment it's chosen not to work. And that's because there's a, a recent Blackmagic driver update, which has rendered the driver believing, or it's rendered Windows, believing that a part of the driver isn't digitally signed, so it won't run. And to be honest, it is a bit of a nightmare trying to run an ATEM and uh, an intensity shuttle and a deck link card all at the same time. There always seems to be <laughs> something that doesn't work. You can get two out of three working. Occasionally I've had all three working, but um, not the easiest of things. And each time they bring out a new update to the ATEM drivers, that also includes the desktop video drivers for the other devices. And I don't know, Sometimes it works, but at the moment it's not working. So unfortunately I can't show you the intensity shuttle. So instead, uh, we're going to use two different Magewell devices. And the first one is their little HDMI dongle.
And doesn't it leave you wanting more? It did me. I was like, oh, golly, come on. I want to see the second part. You know, that was part one. I'm ready for part two right now. I want to see. But what a fascinating discovery. I mean, a fascinating um, kind of behind the scenes look at what's going on, where the, the latency is being introduced, and the fact that, you know, different cards have the ability to reduce that latency uh, by a frame or two. I thought that was really good. And, and Martin, I appreciate you you passing that along. And I don't know if you guys noticed during the uh, during the video how good uh, the lighting was. Martin's lighting, you know, it's the kind of thing, good, good lighting and good audio you never really notice. It's bad lighting and bad audio where you say, oh my goodness, that's terrible. But when you get a chance, watch this again on, on YouTube, or if you're watching on YouTube, back it up and, and take a look at the lighting on, on Martin when it shows him how, how, well that, how well done that lighting is. And uh, also a, a cool little uh, picture in picture that he had going there that I'll have to get him to share how he did that. But thank you, that's Martin K of uh, Zen Computers in Manchester that uh, designs and builds uh, PCs for uh, mostly video applications, I think, but uh, you can check him out. Uh, at the very least, uh, you know, Google Zen Computers Manchester and you will get a link to, uh, to Martin. So thank you, sir. Um, Moving on to an, another little bit in our smorgasbord here of, of things, all things VidBlaster. Um, one of the things that uh, my, you know, so many of the ideas for the show come from you, the, the viewers. Excuse me, and I appreciate that a great deal. And one of the uh, one of the requests I got from actually a, a client this week, the one one that we're doing a PC build for this week said, uh, I really would like, when, when VidBlaster starts out, I really would like my logo to pop up instead of the VidBlaster logo. Isn't there a way to do that? I think, I think he had read something about it or heard something about it. And um, how about that? Yes, there is. And it's really pretty simple. Uh, you have to, I, I haven't done it yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm basing it on, on what I've read. Um, but I can't wait to try it. But from what I understand, when you make the installation of VidBlaster, you, you add a file to the installation that, uh, well, what's the best way to put it? Well, you, you add a graphic file to the installation. Um, the graphic file has to be in a PNG format, and it has to have a particular name, and it's recommended that it have a particular size. Uh, the name is OEM splash dot PNG OEM splash dot PNG and the resolution size it would be 433 by 299 and and that would go in with the original installation um, so I'm gonna try that and I'll report it back to you next week in fact I'll take a little video of what it looks like when it when it splashes on the screen like that um, it should be it should be pretty cool and the the uh, the 433 by 299 if, if you don't apparently if you don't get your resolution you know spot on it will stretch it um, to fit so whatever that whatever that resolution um, 433 to 299 what what would be I don't know if that's that's definitely not 43 um, and it doesn't look like 169. Um, anyway, whatever that whatever that aspect ratio is, you, you want to make sure it matches in in whatever you do, so that your logo doesn't end up getting squashed or stretched. Um, but that's a cool way to kind of customize your PC, and especially if you're you're out in the field somewhere and you want to kind of uh, show off uh, if if you've got your own production company and you want to put your logo on there so that as you fire things up to start a, start at one of your productions, you've got that ability to, to show off your bet, to put your best foot forward, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so many of the, the changes in VidBlaster have been as a result of folks like you and me making requests to VidBlaster and, 
And I think we talked about that in last week's show. And I would encourage you, if you come up with some great ideas, don't be bashful about going to the Bid Blaster Forum and sharing them. You may not feel like they're ready to, to be under the category of a feature request, but if you just want to chat about it and throw your idea out and let some other experienced Fid Blaster user comment on it and say, you know, why it's a great idea or why it needs to be changed a little bit or, you know, hopefully they'll be gentle if it's not, not a great idea. But uh, throw those out there because folks that, that are coming to Fid Blaster for the first time are seeing it with different eyes. You know, it, it, it's, like, it's like anything else. People that, uh, and, and what was it? I heard a commercial on the, on the radio today. And I'm sure the people that wrote the commercial knew the product very, very well. But I had no clue what the product was. Terry Bradshaw, American football coach, uh, football player, was uh, promoting it. And, and he was talking about it. And he was very convincing. But I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was a service or a product or if it was something to do with trucks or trailers or open road vehicles or could have been licorice. Uh, I, I, I couldn't tell. Um, so, but people that are listening to something for the very first time or people that are just, just seeing VidBlaster for the first time will see it with a different set of eyes. You know, more critical eyes, sometimes less experienced eyes, but also with eyes that can provide some really good input. Um, this is kind of off the VidBlaster beaten track, but, but let me illustrate that point. There was a magazine in the U.S. several years ago, years ago called Inc. Magazine, I-N-C, short for Incorporated. And it was basically a magazine about small corporations. And they had done a study on marketing and public perception. And they had gone to a, um, a fish market. I think it was out in the, in the Northwest and had put in, I, I think they had monitored a suggestion box as, as, you know, they were kind of partnering with the fish market. And one of the suggestions in the suggestion box was a criticism that says, your fish is not fresh. Well, the owner of the company took offense of that, but he said, of course our fish is fresh. You know, it comes, it comes right off the boat. We wrap it up in, in, in cellophane. We put it, put it out there. Um, you know, it's all nicely wrapped and packed, and all people have to do is pick it up and put it in their cart, and away they go. And so he contacted this little old lady who said his fish wasn't fresh and said, what do you mean, you know, why isn't my fish fresh? And she said very simply, if your fish was fresh, it would be sitting out unwrapped on a bed of ice right off the truck, right off the boat. And he said, okay, we'll do a test. And so he set up two uh, displays in his store at the entrance to the store, big, big, you know, fresh, uh, fresh air fish market. And on one table, it had all the fish carefully wrapped and sealed the way he generally does it. And on the other table, it had fish just laying out there in the ice. And I guess there was some way to wrap it up and put it in your buggy. Well, wouldn't you know it, the fish that was on the ice outsold the, pre, the, the pre-wrapped fish, the same exact fish. You know, no, no, none was more, <laughs> was fresher than the other. Um, but the, the fresh, the fish that was just laying out on the ice had the appearance of being fresh and sold at like four times the rate of the other one. And this was because somebody that came into the store that didn't know a lot about fish and didn't know a lot about the store, but thought fresh fish would be sitting on ice. Well, you might have that same perspective for VidBlaster. And so if that's the case, I would encourage you to come into the forum and to share some thoughts. If you have to do it up in the support section because you're not a licensed user right now, what the heck, go ahead. Throw some ideas out there. You might just have uh, a great idea. One of the ideas I came up with this week, and I think I'm going to try it on next week's show, is if we start from the default profile and use a stopwatch, how long does it take before we go from the default profile to streaming a live stream? I'm betting it's going to be definitely less than a minute, maybe even less than 30 seconds. And I would challenge, Vid, I would challenge any of VidBlaster's competitors to be able to bring something to, to, uh, to live stream that quickly. It'll be interesting to test. Uh, we've been testing vMix and been testing Wirecast. And so, uh, you know, I'll try to set up a test 
with myself as the tester, hopefully uh, as objective as I can possibly be to see if we can uh, find out how quickly we can get all of those up and running and streaming because uh, that's what people want to do as soon as they get a, a cool new toy like this is to say, okay, let's make it do something. I want to see myself on the screen and I want to stream it out there and call my mom and tell her to pick up the phone and, and, uh, and see if she can see it. So, so I, I get a pat on the back, I guess. I guess that's the best way to put it. So that's going to be a fun little project that'll be coming up next week. Um, also coming up next week, we're hoping to see the release of version two point, excuse me, three point two three, that will include the uh, the updates to the recorder module and some other updates. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Um, we have split that VidBlaster guy into two segments. So in segment two today, we'll be using our our new name for for that show called Streaming Idiots. We hope you'll stay tuned if you're watching us live. And if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we'll be releasing that show on YouTube on Friday. So if you're watching this show and it's Thursday, then you can look forward to watching Streaming Idiots on Friday because we release those on Friday afternoons. So you've got something to watch over the weekends. Um, we are still we're still in alpha shows. We're, we're just lollygagging around trying to get all the graphics right, get everything in that. Actually, it's these darn PC builds that are that are just uh, pulling my time away from, from a new show. So we will uh, deal with that as best we can. Um, oh, full disclosure, I should have said this at the beginning of the show, I am an authorized VidBlaster reseller, uh, so I do make profit on any VidBlaster software that you buy from me in my store, that VidBlasterGuide.com, and uh, would be happy to consult with you if you're putting together a internet uh, broadcasting studio or if you want to broadcast uh, uh, video and audio at your church services or from your son's um, football team or your daughter's volleyball team uh, if you want to broadcast those games I'd be happy to share my experiences uh, in you know the, the, the three subjects you know talk talk shows sporting events and and worship services are the three big the three big ones that I see that did blaster really fits well into and so I'd be happy to share my experiences with you if you've downloaded the trial and by the way you can download a fully functional version of VidBlaster from the uh, either the vidblaster.com um, and I think there's a link in there for for a trial version or if you go to the VidBlaster forum which is forum.vidblaster.com and go to the download section you can uh, download the latest beta or you can go back in time and download the latest official release and, and play around with them. And that's equivalent to the studio version, which is the next to top version. So if, if, you, if you download it and try it and you say, oh, I want to buy it, but I'm going to buy the Pro, not the studio, check the comparison chart on vidblaster.com so that you make sure that whatever feature you've been using in the studio is actually a feature that's available to you in the... Uh, in the pro version. For example, the uh, uh, the pro, oh boy, I don't want to speak out of turn. Anyway, there's some differences. Um, so you'll want to make sure you, you've got the differences right. Um, I, well, here's one in particular. In the home edition, the output module is not an option. And the output module is what you can use to output VidBlaster to another monitor or output it to another program. Uh, right now, we are using the VidBlaster output module with the program module as the source and the VidBlaster VVD, the virtual video device, as the destination. And then we're using Wirecast to actually stream this. So in Wirecast, uh, we've set up a camera, and the camera source is VidBlaster VVD. So that's how we're passing our video through, and then Wirecast picks up the audio directly from the mixer. So if, you, if you're buying VidBlaster, make sure you check the comparison chart and make sure that whatever modules you're using in the Studio Trial Edition are modules that will be available to you in the Pro or the uh, Home Edition. And if you're interested in the, in the Broadcast Edition, it's, it's the one above the Studio. 
um, and you want to want to know if it does something I've got a copy here and I can show you you know I'll, I'll let you virtually look over my shoulder and show you how that works um, so that you can see if it'll do what you need it to do here too so I'm Tom Sinclair that VidBlaster guy it's been a pleasure to to bring this segment to you uh, again if you are watching live hang around we're gonna have a little um, little intercession, I mean not intercession, what do they call it, intermission uh, here in between segments and then we'll be back with uh, Streaming Idiots shortly. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube we'd love to have you subscribe that way you'll get a notice whenever we post a new video which will be Wednesdays for that VidBlaster guy and Fridays for Streaming Idiots. So thanks so much for showing up. We look forward to seeing you again in the near future and uh, have a great day.